Mogul Embassy versus Bang Bang Gang for the Ring of Honor six-man tag team titles. I realize that the viewership of Battle of the Belts is not high, but one of the reasons it's not high is because we all know there's never going to be a title change on that show. There have literally been, there's been one actual title change. Yeah, Sammy Guevara. And the other was Sammy winning a vacant title. So we've now had nine. And uh, why they could not change these titles on Battle of the Belts, I have no earthly idea. Because that's what you need to do if you want people to watch Battle of the Belts, is at least have a belt change hands sometime in the last eight shows. Especially when you have like four champion or three championship matches on every one of the shows. Yes. So they've had 27-ish you know, right? Some number like that. How many battle belts have there been? Nine? Well, there have been nine. Three, okay, per, be, three matches per show. That's 27 so that's matches. 27, so probably so 25 times the champions retained. Yes. Which but is here, too high of a percentage, absolutely. Here on Dynamite, it's Bang Bang Gang and Mogul Embassy. And uh, didn't have a ton of heat early, but it picked up there at the end. And uh, Nana tried to interfere. Trip J, Khan hit the double knee to the gut. J kicked out. Nana hits the ring with the belt, but Anthony Bowens makes the save. And then Jay hits the Blade Runner out of nowhere, wins the titles. So bang, bang, gang, new Ring of Honor six-man tag team champions. They and beat, then uh, beat Bishop Khan. Acclaimed on the ramp, told them, we really need to team up as a unit. What are they going to do, go for the 12-man championships? Maybe they need to make a 12-man title. <sighs> Hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Had not thought of that. Then we had the uh, Adam Cole... Why are they called the six-man titles? Should be called the three-man titles. Trios championships. Aren't they called the trios I championships? They're, I guess they're the trios championships. Six-man was what they were called in the 80s. Yes. Adam Cole promo with Wardlow, who he said is going to run down opponent after opponent until he wins the title. So he would go against... The way it feels to me is that whoever comes out of that three-way, that Wardlow would be going after that person. Probably, yeah. Because they didn't really... They're not really... Spe- unless they go to, to four-way. But it always feels like Swerve and Adam Page are linked. We don't need at- a four-way here. Three-way is fine. Yeah. Oh, I agree. We had Deanna Perazzo, Anna J, Tony Storm on commentary. And half the match was them just filming Tony Storm. And the match was fine, but didn't have a lot of heat early. And then Tony Deanna got the win. mat work is really good. Yep. She won with her... Uh, Venus, Venus to Milo. Milo. Yeah. And then Tony said, an arm bar, how original. And so Renee goes interview Deanna afterwards. Well, you missed the best part of the, of the match, which was um, Tony Storm thinking that Ian Riccoboni was Tony Schiavone. <laughs> okay. That was like the most entertaining thing. I, I guess. Know. I mean, she just, you know, she talked about how, you know, how he's gotten younger and better looking and gotten in better shape. And she kept calling him Schiavone or whatever she's been calling Tony Schiavone. And she just kept pretending that Ian was Tony Schiavone and, and talking about how how youthful he's looking and uh, shaved that horrible mustache and beard and everything. Well, afterwards, Deanna is asked about uh, Tony and she says, you know, we used to be like sisters. It's clear you've changed, but so have I. You might have been friends with Diana, but you've never met the virtuosa. So Tony is aghast. And she says, technically speaking, you're an artificially tanned hag. <laughs> she says, I should. Well, they're, they're probably going to be rest. That's probably a pay-per-view match, I'm too. sure it is. Yeah. She says, I that's, should that's get in the one. ring and sock you right in the box. Yeah. And Renee lost it. They had a shoe throwing contest to head into the break. That's was another Mariah, one six Mariah weeks and, out. Mariah and Deanna were the ones throwing shoes at each other. Yeah, Taz was not happy at shoes going his way. Hmm. He was going to get ready to choke somebody out right there. And we had private party and top flight. So uh, this match was kind of weird because uh, it's two teams that are like renowned for their high flying, and they're like doing mat work and holds and ankle locks, and even the announcers are like. Don't see a lot of arm bars from Mark Quinn, but he was doing them. And then uh, they finally made the big comeback at the end, and it was good. They hit the gin and juice. Darius broke it up. And then Quinn rolled him up, grabbed the ropes, pinned him. So it's basically a private party. Worked the whole match as babyface, then turned heel at the end. Yeah. Quinn did all of his stuff, but he's slower. He's definitely well, he's, he's, slower. He's, he's, he, he looked like he, he, he's wearing a shirt, but it did feel like he was heavier. And he was he was... Well, I mean, he he tore his pec. I don't know that that would necessarily make you slower. It shouldn't, but uh... yeah, but but I agree with you. He was he was moving a little bit slower. 
It felt like he had gained weight. Then we had Samoa Joe and Hook, and they aired this entire match commercial free. And uh, for what it was, it was great. I mean, Samoa Joe, he Brock Lesnar and this guy all over, and Hook would fight back. And I mean, the thing with the match was, I don't think anyone believed that Hook was going to win this match. Nobody did. But, but they, they, got, but they, they pretended got anyway. they believed. And uh, he would injured. make his comebacks, and they would freaking go nuts. And then finally end up outside, and the scariest goddamn thing I've seen all year, Joe grabs him, and he gives him a spinning urinaga under the table. But literally the only thing that hit the table was the back of Hook's head, and the table just exploded. I thought, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And Doc Samson goes over there, and he checks on him. And apparently, I mean, we hear this all the time, but apparently Hook was fine. I don't know how. And then Joe gave him the big power bomb on the apron and uh, throws him in the ring. He hits the muscle buster, and Hook kicks out at one. And this place went nuts. And he fires up. He's doing this big comeback. It's literally nothing but, like, lariats, and they're going crazy. Hits the big T-bone, puts him in the red rum, but Joe blocks it, switches to the choke, and Hook goes out. Very well done. I mean, you knew Hook was going to lose, but, I mean, they gave him, like... I mean, this was this was very very well done. I mean, they didn't give him a lot of offense, but the offense that the, the offense that gave him counted. I mean, like everything that was in this match made sense to build. It was really well put together match, um, and I thought Joe, you know, I thought Joe did a great great job. You know, in the sense that he was able to keep himself a monster while at the same time, Hook got destroyed and kept you know even after the match twice. Hook challenges him to come back and fight, and Joe whips his ass again both times, which normally Actually, is... only one time. He whipped his ass the first time. He gave him the muscle buster. But the second time, before Joe could kill him, that's when Hangman's music came, yeah, he came well, out. Yeah. And Joe bailed. But yeah, they showed Swerve in the crowd watching, Hangman's watching. They said, a lot of challengers for this champion. And then Hangman helped Hook up, endorse him as the show ended. I thought it was great for Hook. You know, he wasn't going to win, but... I think he's he's more over now than he was before the match, which is the goal of a match like this. So yeah, but that all depends on the follow up. If well, they don't yeah. follow up, it, it'll if make he that, vanishes that. for six months, that would suck certainly. Yeah, I mean it, it, the thing is, is that he's got to, um, you know, he's got to, he's got to do. You know, I'm not saying win every match or anything like that, but he's got to be featured in a you know. In a pretty good way. It's time or, to move him up the ladder. Yeah. Give him a real feud with a guy. That's what he needs. Well, he's, he's a, he's but a, he can he's, win in the end. He feuded with Jack Perry and he won that one. Yeah, but you dude, know. that was a long time ago. Yeah. I mean, Jack Perry hasn't been around in five months. Yeah. So it's time to do something now. Yeah, well, uh, he's hot. feuded with Wheeler Yuta. That was just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, but that was a pre show match. Like, he needs a match with a star that's going to be like a featured thing. And like a big match on pay-per-view. Not, hey, we're doing this match. It's going to be on the pre-show. He's always on the pre-show. It's time to move off the pre-show. Maybe Roderick Strong? Could be, yeah. After if, when if Roderick, Roderick wins that title, title, yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.